During this demo, I'm going to show you how an attacker can leverage a two-part web attack. In the first part, the attacker is going to leverage a web application vulnerability known as a cross-site scripting flaw to infect a legitimate website with malicious code. In the second part of the attack, I'll show you how this malicious code living on a legitimate site can force a drive-by download or force a victim computer to download and install malicious software automatically. So before I start, let me show you my setup. I, I'm doing this uh, demo with two virtual machines. The first one is this victim computer, which is a typical Windows XP Service Pack 3 machine. Now this computer is also a web server. As you can see, I have XAMPP here, which is a special copy of Apache and MySQL. So it's running a typical web server in the background, and it's running a site I'll show you in a second. Now let's take a look at the attacker computer. This is a computer running Backtrack 4, which is a free downloadable Linux distro you can use to penetration test com uh, your network or other computers. Uh, it has many hacker programs built in. Now this attacker machine is also running a web server that has a bunch of malicious code I'll be using in the drive-by download. If I go ahead and check on Apache, you can see it's running. But besides that, I don't really need many tools to leverage my first attack, which is a cross-site scripting attack against the victim web server I showed you a second ago. To do a cross-site scripting attack, I just need a simple web browser. So I'm going to go ahead and visit the victim website I was talking about, and here we are at the website that's running on the Windows XP machine. Now this is a website uh, made to mimic a typical blog site where you might uh, submit some blog posts and things like that. However, this site has been purposely coded in securely. Now before I start this demo, let me show you how the blog site works. If I go ahead and type entry and press submit, uh, you're going to see the entry down here. But the problem with this site is the developer didn't actually code it securely. He didn't code the submission form securely. And as a result, an attacker can actually type even web script within the submission form. And the website is going to allow that and instead of actually treating it as a blog post, it's going to actually interpret that code as something it should run. So if I type a, a demo script here and I press submit, you notice this pop-up window shows up. Now this is a benign pop-up window, but what happened was that script I typed, you notice there's no post down where anonymous is. But that script I typed was interpreted by the web server, and it ran it as though it were its own code. Now this little XSS pop-up isn't that scary. It's just something a researcher would do to prove a site's vulnerable to cross-site scripting. There's a lot worse ways an attacker can leverage this particular vulnerability. So let me go ahead and reset my demo website, which will get rid of that last cross-site scripting error. I'll show you a more scare way an attacker might leverage this flaw. So what I'm going to do is open this text pad here where I have some uh, other web script I've already written out. And I'm going to submit this web script to the blog instead. Now when I press submit, something's going to happen, but I want you to ignore it for now because I want to go to the victim machine after. So now let's take a peek back at the victim machine. Now at this point you have to realize that the cross-site scripting portion of this demo is done. That attacker's injected script on this victim computer's website so that any visitor that visits the site is going to get that script running on his computer. So let's go ahead and pretend we're a victim computer visiting this website. So I'm going to go ahead and come to the website from a victim computer. And say we're the administrator, I'm going to go ahead and log in here. By the way, I never use this password I use in my demos. That would be a very dumb password to use. And we're logged in as the administrator. And say I want to take a peek and see what people were doing on my blog, I might go to this page and, and show all users' blog entries. And when I do, I get this pop-up. And this pop-up is a result from that cross-site scripting attack I showed you earlier. Anyone that visits the site will get this pop-up. Uh, if I go ahead and scroll the browser, it looks as though it's just a pop-up, not part of the browser window. And as you can see, it says I've been infected with a Trojan. And if I want to uh, save my computer, I need to click here to clean it. Now, when I click there, this is where the drive-by download comes. 
that cross-site scripting code was just used as a phishing lure to, to get a victim to go to some malicious site. And in this case, it's redirecting me to this site here. This site looks like a legitimate uh, AV site, but what's happening is behind the scenes, it's leveraging a vulnerability in Internet Explorer, a memory corruption flaw that, that came out in 2009. And it's quietly leveraging that flaw to forcefully install software on my computer. And here's that software it just popped up, Antivirus PC 2009. And you're probably familiar with software like this. It's basically called Rogueware or Fake AV Software. It's not real antivirus software. It's just pretending to be. Its whole point is to try to get me to go to a website and pay full price for antivirus software that doesn't really do anything at all. So let's take a peek at this antivirus software for a sec because it's interesting. And this really comes from the wild, by the way. This is a live sample. You can see it's pretending to scan my computer. I can click around and check some of the settings. And you notice any of the settings I do, if I click on update or if I go to the settings and change something, everything I do, it tries to force me to the registration page. Now, since this was live software, I actually went when I first got it to the registration page to see what it looked like. And it brought me to this uh, screenshot of this typical HTTPS site where it's asking me for about $50 and some change to buy this software. Now, meanwhile, behind the scenes, the software has found all kinds of viruses on my computer. And of course, none of these viruses exist. Uh, these files probably don't even exist on my computer. The whole point of this fake AV software is to try to get me to purchase something I don't need. So that was a combined one-two web attack, where again, first the attacker leveraged a cross-site scripting flaw to infect a legitimate website. Then everyone that visited that site might get a pop-up telling them they've been infected with something. And if they click on the link in that pop-up and they haven't patched Internet Explorer, they're going to get this fake AV software on their computer.